maybe just to start off on this, it'll be good to talk a little bit about, you know, circles and the different parts of them and stuff, because that's going to be what this 7.9 is about, right? So when we're talking about a circle, right, we've got a center and then the center to the outside edge is called the radius. And remember that that circles are, you know, have equal distances anywhere from the center to the outside edge. So it doesn't matter where your radius is, it's always going to be the same length, right? Because that's just the nature of circles. And so, um, so remember that the radius is just from the center to the outside edge. The diameter would be all the way across, right? So if I went from one side through the center to another, to the other side, that's the diameter, okay? Let's see if it'll let me get rid of those two, and I'll just label this one as D, meaning the diameter, right? And then, um, and then there's an equation of a circle in standard form that you're going to see, but then you're also going to see an equation in general form. So we'll talk about these two different forms. Okay, so equation of circle in standard form. Right, this is something you'll need to know in order to write an equation of a circle. And it says x minus h, all squared, plus y minus k, all squared, equals r squared. Right, and so, and just to clarify in this, the center of the circle is going to be found at h comma k. Right, so this h and this k in our e equation is really important because it tells us the center and then the radius is r. Okay. okay, so that's in standard form and that's often, we like it in standard form because it's easy to pick out where the center is, it's easy to see what the radius is. And um, so we can just go from the center and then just count out right, the amount of places that we need to get to that outside edge, right? But the other type of equation that we'll deal with, so equation of a circle in general form, right, looks like this. So we'll say AX squared plus bx plus cy squared plus dx. Um, let's see, equals e. So when it's in general form, it looks like this. And so it's, it's hard to tell when it's in general form, like we have to change the look of it to really be able to figure out where the center and the radius are. So that's why general form is not as helpful um, in circles, but we need to know how to change it from general form to standard form. So that's one of the things that we're gonna talk about today and how to do that. Okay. I have a question sure. on that general, general form. Yeah. On that, on that, on that D, D, should it be a Y, y next to it? Or oh, it should be a Y, yes. Thank uh, you so much. <laughs> Let's see change that to a y, right? Because we're gonna have an x squared and an x and a y squared and a y, and then equals some constant term over here, okay? Or it could say, you know, plus e equals zero if everything was over on one side, but. All right, good, good, good. So let's look at just a couple of, you know, things that you might have to do on the homework and that way I can clarify anything for you here that you might need, right? So, um, so if it says, find an equation of a circle, 
with radius at three or one comma negative three. Whoops, sorry. I'm at the center. Okay, the center that makes more sense, right? At this point and a radius um, of six. Okay, so the easiest way, right, to write the equation of a circle, you could write it in either standard form or general form, but it's definitely going to be easier for us to choose this standard form. Put in what we know, right, as our, we know that this is our h and this is our k, and we know the radius is 6, so we know that 6 is what r is going to be in that formula. All right, so if I fill that in, so I'm just going to kind of keep looking back up here to this one, All right? So x minus h, which is 1, all squared, plus y minus k, which is negative 3, so minusing a negative 3 is really going to be adding 3, all squared, and then equals 6 squared. Right, and so then make sure, you know, we need to square that 6, and if there was anything else that needed to be simplified there, make sure you do any of that simplification. And so that would be your answer. And it's not wrong to leave it as 6 squared, and in fact, I think the homework will actually even accept it if you leave it as 6 squared or if you change it to 36. It should accept it either way on that but it's more correct to just simplify it as much as you can there, okay? All right, let's look at the other kind because uh, um, it seems to be, let's see, if we're given an equation, right? So given the equation of a circle, something like x minus 4 all squared plus y plus 3 all squared equals 10. All right, so sometimes it'll give you the equation of a circle and then it wants you to find the center and the radius. Okay. All right, so I want you to use your chat box and first put down where you think the center of this circle is. Don't hit enter quite yet. Just go ahead and type in where you think the center of the circle is. All right, three, two, one, hit enter. That's what Trace said. Awesome. So you remember that you got to change that sign, right, inside here. So um, back towards the beginning of the semester, I said this little thing that said like insiders or liars. And so notice how, you know, this is inside these parentheses. And so you have to, you know, the center of this is really going to be the opposite of it. So four comma negative three. All right. Okay, and then what would the radius of this be? Go ahead and try and type that into your chat also. Don't hit enter quite yet. What would the radius of that be? All right, three, two, one, hit enter. Awesome. Well, you guys are saying square root of 10, right? And since you couldn't put 
the you know square root symbol in there, right? But you could do a decimal approximation, which it looks like um, some of you did there, right? So that's approximately, we know that the square root of 9 is 3, right? So the square root of 10 must be a little bit bigger than that. When you put it into your calculator, it's about 3.16, right? So, so you could just, sometimes it'll ask you to write it down, round it to a certain place value. If it doesn't, then just leave it in the root form, right? in that square root form. Okay. So it's just kind of undoing what we did in the first example. All right, let's look at another example, and then we'll see if there's more, like if there's things from the homework you want to look at, too. All right, so on this one, um, let's take one of the ones that are in general form and try and change those into standard form, because that tends to be something that's asked for on the test a lot, sometimes shows up on the final exam too, hint, 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 right? So if we have, um, let's see, so let's just say right x squared plus y squared plus 8x minus 2y plus 15 equals 0. So let's write this in standard form okay, by using complete the square. Right? So we talked about this whole idea of completing the square right, back um, in the last module. But now we're going to need to use it again to be able to write something, one of these circles, in standard form if it gives it to us in general form, right? And then we're going to state the center and radius. All right, so let's do this. So if we are trying to use completing a square, we want to get the x parts together. So I want to take this x squared and this 8x. I'm going to write it this way. So x squared plus 8x. I'm just kind of reorganizing this. Plus blank. Right? And I'm going to try and make this into a perfect square trinomial so that I'll be able to write this in the standard form. Then also need to take the y's and group those together. So I'll have plus y squared minus 2y plus blank. So I'll do another completing the square here. Okay. Then I need to move that 15 over to the other side. So I'm basically going to subtract that over. So minus 15 over there. And then if I add right, this purple blank here to the left side, I need to even it out by adding it to the right side. And if I added that blue blank right, to the left side, I need to also add it to the right side just to keep things balanced. Okay. All right, so just looking at the purple part here, can somebody remind us how would we go about completing the square on this x's part? Divided by, by two squared. squared. Yeah, so we want to take that middle term, that 8, right, divide it by 2, and then we'll square that whole thing. So 4 squared gives me 16. So I'm going to add 16 to this side, also add 16 to the other side. Right, and then similarly with the blue here, right, so I take that b term, that negative 2, divide it in half, and then square it. Right, so negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 all squared is just a positive 1. So I'll add 1 over there. Okay. Now I can take this purple part and rewrite it right, in the, you know, in that form that looks like you know, something all squared. So this is a perfect square trinomial. It would factor to be x plus 4 times x plus 4. 
but I'd want to write that as x plus 4 all squared, right? And it's always going to be whatever, you know, that, that middle term divided by 2 is. Right? That's going to give you that number there, that 4. And then similarly, on the blue part, right, half of our negative 2 is 1, right, that negative 1. So when I write this out, I'll have plus y minus 1, right? So be careful. That's negative there. This is also negative here, right? Negative 1 all squared. And then I just need to combine the things together here. So negative 15 plus 16 is 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay. And so then what would my center be? Let me just go ahead and say it out loud. I'll type it in. Negative 4, negative 4, 1. Yeah, negative 4, positive 1. And then what's my radius? Uh, square, root square root of 2. Yeah, square root of 2. You can just leave it in root form unless it asks you specifically to, you know, change that to a decimal. Okay. All right, what questions do you have about that one? This one tends to be kind of the trickier part of this, and most of it is just remembering how to do complete the square on it. But then when you see, oh, yeah, I'm just completing the square twice, um, and then I can find that. Is there anything I can clarify better for you there? All right, was there anything on the homework that you weren't quite sure about? I know sometimes on the homework they might, you know, ask something kind of weird or, you know, word it in a way that you're like, I think I know what they're asking, but maybe not. So is there anything that you found on the homework you'd like to look at? All right, I'm going to have you try these two then and see how you can do with this, All right? So kind of similar to the one that we just did above. So write x squared minus 3x plus y squared minus 5y equals 6 in standard form. and state the center and radius. Okay, and then the other one I want you to try, so I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes to work on these, is um, given the center negative 7 comma negative 10 and Another point on the circle, um, 17 comma 18, okay. I want you to write the equation of a line. Wait, or, sorry, I meant circle. <laughs> Hard to do a line. Write an equation of a circle, okay, given those inform that information. Okay, let me give you just a couple minutes to try those and see if you're able to get through them okay or if you get stuck somewhere. And if you're getting stuck, feel free to just type in the chat or say it out loud. Okay, let's take a look at these. I'll start writing down some stuff on here, but feel free to just keep working. We're not quite done yet.
All right, so for me, I like putting these blanks in. I think it just helps keep things organized a little bit better. And just remember, whatever you add to one side, you got to add to the other side of this. Now, on this one, right, we end up getting some decimals, and that's just fine. Um, let's just, you know, go ahead and do this. So if I do negative 3, right, divided by 2, that's going to give me negative 1 half. All right, so negative, sorry, one and a half, I don't know what I said there. All right, so negative one and a half, and then I need to square that. And then on the blue part, I need to take negative five, half it, and that's negative 2.5, and then I need to square that. And that's what's going to give me the numbers to put in those blanks there. All right, so, um, so when I take one negative one and a half and I square it I get 2.25 so I'll put that in both of those there and then when I take negative two and a half and I square it I get 6.25 okay so then this next line I'm going to rewrite my purple part so that it's written in the form that I want it in, right? So it's going to be x minus that 1.5 all squared plus y minus 2.5 all squared. And then when I add these parts up over here, I end up getting 14.5. So then my center on this, let's see, so my center right here would be remember, the opposite of each of those. So 1.5 comma 2.5. And then my radius needs to be the square root of that, right? The square root of 14.5. And you could leave it that way, but oftentimes if it has like a decimal in it, it'll ask you to round like to the nearest hundredth, right, to two place values. So that would be like 3.81 if you put that into your calculator and then rounded it to two decimal places. I'm going to put a little, it's not exactly equal to, so I'll put these little approximate signs there. Okay, what questions do you have on that one? Were you able to figure it out? Maybe have the, raise your hand if you were able to get that figured out. Find that center and that radius. Let's click the hand raise button just so I can see. And if you didn't get there, please, you know, type in the chat or ask me out loud. I did end up getting there, but originally I was just like using fractions. Oh, and that just kind of made it crazy, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Yeah, so when you see something like this on um, the homework, I'm pretty sure that it'll just be fine if you use those decimals and stuff. And in fact, it might even say something about using decimals in the question. So look at that because, yeah, that would make it a lot harder if you had to deal with those fractions. So good point. Thank you for bringing that up. All right, you guys. It really just, I mean, they're both the same. The only way that you'll know, like on the homework, is they'll usually just state like what they want, um, in which form they want it in. But, you know, I mean, you could do it the other way. It just, it does get a little bit crazier, I would say, using fractions on this instead of decimals. But in the end, I mean, if you have a calculator that works fractions anyway, it, you know, it probably wouldn't be too hard to do it that way. But yeah, it's really just preference. There's not any kind of rhyme or reason to when, you know, to use decimals or fractions. It's kind of more of a preference. So. Okay, so on the final, we could do it either way. It'll state specifically 
which way it wants your answer. Because the, remember, the final exam is going to be really similar to the way you've been taking your quizzes and your exams. And so you'll notice that, you know, it'll usually say, like, write your answer in fraction, you know, in simplified fraction form, or write your answer rounded to two decimal places. And if it doesn't tell you, then um, that means that you can write it either way. So, oh, okay. thank, thank you. you. Yeah. All right. So let's look at the other one too. Um, let's see. Let me have you guys keep your hands up or raise your hands again um, if you were able to figure out this second one. Just want to see if you came up with an answer or if you got stuck somewhere. Okay, kind of looks like it might be half and half on this one. So let's take a look at this. Remember that the center of the circle, right, is that H comma K. And then any point on the circle is just going to be like your X and your Y. So there's a couple of different ways you could do this, but knowing that, right, we could go back up to that standard form of the circle and put in these things that we know. So I'm going to write the standard form down again here just so it's easy to see. All right, so all I'm going to do is start plugging things into this. So I know my x is 17. I know my h is negative 7, so I'm minusing a negative 7, all right? So maybe I'll just write it down like that just to make sure everybody's with me that I'm minusing a negative, all right? And then, let me, and that's all squared, plus my y is 18 minus my k, Right, so I'm minusing a negative 10 on this. And then the only thing that I don't know is my r. So I'm basically, oops, I forgot to put my squared there. I'm, I'm basically just trying to solve this for r so that once I find r, I can use my center and then my radius to write that equation, right? So if I simplify this up, 17, plus 7 gives me 24, so I'll have 24 squared, plus 18 minus a negative 10 is really plus 10, so I've got 28 squared, and then equals r squared. All right, well, let's go ahead and simplify 24 squared plus 28 squared, all right, on this. And when you do that, that should give you that 1360. All right, check in your calculator. Make sure, good, looks like Parker came up with that. And it's what your R squared is. Now you could go and find R, but remember that when you're writing this equation of a circle anyway, highlight this, all right, you're looking for R squared. So you don't really need to take the square root of this because then in the end you're going to have to end up squaring it again, which is going to get you back to that 1360. Okay, so now we'll take that. So to write the equation, right, so we're going to use our center. So x plus 7, all squared, plus y plus 10, all squared equals 1360. And so that is your equation of a circle. All right, so if it gives you the center and some other point on the circle, that's one way you could go about doing that. And then, you know, the videos that you watched could have shown maybe a little bit of a different way. Um, basically, the distance formula is the same thing as this. So I know that sometimes people explain this using the distance formula instead, and if that's easier for you, then you could go that way. 
But for me, it's just easier to just plug everything in and then just solve for that r squared. That's how I do. Questions on that one? That's the way that Amish are us that same way. Oh, it did? Okay. Good, good, good. Yeah, because I know there's a few different ways that you can do it. So, all right. Well, um, I'd say if there's no other questions that you have on that 7.9, I'd say we use the rest of the time to try and do some um, stuff with the review. So I'm going to pull up the review here. I'm going to put the review here next to it so we can see both at the same time. It would be a little bit easier. So this is just in the, you know, there's the module about exam number three, and then they give you kind of a little study guide that you can use, and it's basically the same study guides that they gave you on module six and module seven, but now it's just kind of meshed together there. So let's see here. What's it doing? Okay. 